Hello and welcome. In this educational aid, we're going to talk about common orbit types and an orbital perturbation that allows specific orbits. Concerning orbits, we'll discuss four different types. Low Earth Orbit, LEO, Mini of Earth Orbit, MEO, Geosynchronous Earth Orbit, GEO, and two special orbits, Sun Synchronous and MANIA. LEO, MEO, and GEO are typically circular prograde orbits, but the defining characteristic for these three orbits is altitude. Sun Synchronous orbits are typically highly inclined and in low Earth orbit. MANIA orbits are highly inclined and eccentric, and typically in medium Earth orbits. For more information concerning inclination, eccentricity, or any other classical orbital element, please see the COE educational aid. In order to better explain orbits, let's first review some key terms. First, we'll start with orbital altitude. Orbital altitude is the height of the orbit above the surface of the Earth. The second term is semi-major axis. Semi-major axis is the average distance between apogee and perigee, and is measured from the center of the Earth. But this can be more simply stated as just half the major axis, where the major axis is the distance from apogee to perigee. The next term is period. As covered in the early educational aids, period is the time it takes for the satellite to complete one revolution of its orbit. In the educational aid on Kepler, we learned about Kepler's third law of orbital motion, which is the proportional relationship between semi-major axis and the period. To put it another way, the lower the orbital altitude, the lower the energy. The higher the orbital altitude, the greater the energy. Let's examine this relationship as we go into more detail with Leo, Mio, and Geo orbit types. Again, Leo, Mio, and Geo orbit types are typically circular. That is, they have an eccentricity pretty close to zero. The first orbit type we'll explore is low Earth orbit, or Leo. For Leo, there is no hard and fast orbital altitude that defines its orbit type. It generally has an orbital altitude that ranges from 100 to 2,000 kilometers. LEO orbital altitudes typically range from 100 to 2,000 kilometers, resulting in orbital velocities ranging from 7.84 to 6.9 kilometers per second. Additionally, the period for those orbits will range from 86 to 127 minutes. Well past LEO is GEO. At GEO, the orbital altitude is an exact altitude, not a range like at LEO. The orbital altitude is 35,862 kilometers. The orbital velocity is 3 kilometers per second, and the period is 24 hours. At GEO, the satellite will stay over the same longitude of the Earth. So as the Earth rotates beneath the satellite, the satellite is traveling at a velocity in sync with the Earth's rotation. Located between LEO and GEO is MEO. MEO has a range of orbital altitudes from just outside of LEO and just inside of GEO with corresponding orbital velocities and periods. However, most applications in MEO are semi-synchronous orbits, which means the orbit's period is roughly 12 hours. Again, this just proves Kepler's third law. Lower is faster and higher is slower. But lower is also less energy, and higher, more energy. As you can see, there are many types of orbits with varying size, shape, and inclination. Moving forward, we are going to talk about two special types of highly inclined orbits, the LEO sun synchronous and MANIA orbits. Both these orbits take advantage of or leverage natural orbital perturbations to make these orbits more stable. But before we can go into detail on the sun synchronous and Manila orbits, we first must explain a specific orbital perturbation, J2. J2 is simply that the Earth is fatter at the equator than at the poles by 44 kilometers. Recall from the gravity educational aid that gravity enables orbits. So with orbits with inclination, as the satellite passes this equatorial bulge, the force of gravity acting on the satellite is greater than when over the poles. This imparts a torque to the orbit. This torque affects two classical orbital elements, 
right ascension of the sending node, or RAN, and argument of perigee. The effect J2 has on RAN is a function of orbital altitude and inclination. The closer the inclination is to 90 degrees, the less the effect J2 has on RAN. Additionally, as the orbital altitude increases, the less J2 affects RAN. This should make sense. Recall the gravity educational aid. The greater the distance between two objects, the less the force of gravity acting on the objects. There is one orbit type that leverages J2 effect on RAN, the sun's synchronous orbit. An interesting effect happens for inclinations between 95 and 105 degrees. In this range, orbit designers choose combinations of altitude and inclination that causes RAN to rotate eastward at exactly the same rate that the Earth rotates around the sun, thus sun synchronous. When satellites are placed in these orbits, they pass over the Earth's equator every day at exactly the same local times throughout the life of the spacecraft. These orbits maintain a consistent shadowing effect for imaging sensors looking down at the Earth's surface. J2 also affects the location of perigee. The shifting of perigee is a function of orbital altitude, inclination, and eccentricity. Again, just like with RAN, the greater the orbital altitude, the less the effect J2 has on argument of perigee. So, of those three COEs, orbital altitude, inclination, and eccentricity, Inclination is the factor that has the greatest effect on the rate of perigee rotation. There are two inclinations, 63.4 and 116.6 degrees, where perigee rotation is zero. At these two inclinations, perigee is locked into its original position. Manaya orbits take advantage of these inclinations to maintain stable orbits that allow satellites to spend significant amounts of each orbital period over a selected portion of the Earth's surface. Manaya orbits typically have an argument of perigee locked at 270 degrees and an inclination of 63.4 degrees. This allows satellites to spend the majority of its 12-hour orbital period over the northern hemisphere. That is it on orbit types. I am Jeremy Brown with the National Security Space Institute, and I hope you enjoyed this educational aid.